Hey, what's up? My name's Samuel Leeds, and in this video, I'm going to share with you the brand new changes that have been announced by the government today in the new budget. Now, you could scroll through and spend hours and hours of research trying to find out the new uh, rules that are coming in and the changes, or you could just watch this quick summary version where I'm going to give you the main points specifically if you're in business or if you're in the property business, these are the ones that are really going to be relevant to you. So the first thing, and I'm going to start with the good, because there's some good and there's some bad. So I'm going to start with the good. The first thing is VAT. Right now, if you're in business, if your company is turning over £85,000 or more, then you need to become VAT registered, value added tax. And um, that will affect you, especially if you're, in, if you're a deal sourcer, and you're selling deals, as soon as you turn over £85,000, or if you're in serviced accommodation, short stay lets, you're going to have to pay VAT if you're making £85,000 turnover or more. If you're a landlord, VAT doesn't apply. But if you're a deal sourcer or any normal business, you're going to have to pay VAT. Uh, they've slightly increased the VAT threshold. So now it's gone from £85,000 to £90,000. So now if you're making 85 grand, you no longer have to be VAT registered and pay an additional 20% value added tax. The new amount, the new limit is £90,000. So I guess that's good news. I mean, it's not like life changing, but it is pretty good news. I've got a lot of students, a lot of people on the academy that are kind of hovering around that VAT threshold. They're making 70, 80 grand and they're like, oh no, I'm going to have to stop paying VAT soon. Now it's £90,000. That's the first thing. Second thing, and this is pretty good as well, capital gains tax. So capital gains tax is if you buy a house as an investment property, you don't pay capital gains tax if it's your home residence. But if you buy a property and it's an investment property and that property appreciates in value, let's say you buy it for 200 grand and then you sell it for 400 grand, you're now going to have to pay tax on that uplift, on that capital appreciation, on that capital gain, you'll pay tax when you sell the property because it's profit. And at the moment, the higher rate... Uh, capital gains tax um, threshold is 28%. So if you make a couple hundred thousand pounds, that's quite a lot of tax. Good news is they've brought that down to a maximum of 24% from 28%, which is potentially going to save you money. If you're buying through a company, you're going to pay corporation tax. So it's not going to affect you anyway. You don't pay capital gains tax. But again, that is a small victory for property investors. So those are two good things. The bad things are they've scrapped multiple dwelling relief. So what this is, is, and I've benefited greatly from this, if you're buying multiple properties at once, or if you're buying a property that's maybe, um, you know, an apartment block, um, you get a um, multiple dwelling relief, which brings down your stamp duty. So they've scrapped this, they said it was being abused, certainly not by me. Um, so they've scrapped this, multiple, multiple dwelling relief will be scrapped, which just means that, I mean, there's many ways to save on stamp duty. If the house is uninhabitable, you don't pay stamp duty. If you're buying a, a company that owns the property, then you're going to pay 0.5% stamp duty. So there's things you can do. Multiple dwelling relief was one of these things to potentially get out of paying uh, as much stamp duty. They've now scrapped this. The other thing that they've scrapped is furnished holiday lets. There have been previously that there's a tax regime which saves. You can, you know, if you if you've got a furnished holiday let, there are certain things that you could, you, for instance, you could offset your um, mortgage payments as tax deductible. So there's certain loopholes and things you could do if you were running your property as a furnished holiday let. There were tax advantages over being a buy to let landlord. They are scrapping the, the tax regime for furnished holiday lets. So again, that's a little bit annoying. So there's some good, there's some bad. They're also slightly reducing national insurance. So if you're self-employed or if you're employed, you will be paying national insurance tax. They've brought that down very slightly. They've said that the average person who is employed will save around about £450 a year on national insurance. So I guess it's better than a prod in the eye with a sharp stick. And the average person that's self-employed will save around £350 per year, which is okay. Of course, it depends on how much you're earning, but there's a few hundred pounds at least that the average person will save per year in national insurance tax. So overall, how do I feel about it? Well, I don't feel there's been any major changes. I think there's a little bit of good, there's a little bit of bad. The world goes on. We keep making money as property investors. Now, what wasn't announced in the budget, but was an update just yesterday that was confirmed by the government, but it wasn't announced officially in this budget. And this is very good news. And that is 
that they have laxed the rules for permitted development. So permitted development, I mean, my last video that I uploaded on YouTube was with a lady called Stacy who bought a shop and she, uh, there was storage above the shop and a basement downstairs. She bought it for 120 grand. She spent 30 grand on it and she got permitted development rights, prior approval, to turn it into a mixed use building. So she got um, a, a flat above the shop. She made 100,000 pound using permitted development. Now permitted development, in 2020, they brought in, that they laxed the rules of permitted development, whereby you could turn a commercial building into a, residential building without planning permission under permitted development rights subject to prior approval. Now, previously, there's been a lot of stipulation and there's been some things that will stop you being able to do this. One of those things is the building <clears throat> has to be empty for three months before you can apply for permitted development rights. Well, yesterday, guess what? They scrapped that. They also said that if that previously that if the commercial building is over 1500 square meters, you have to get full planning permission. They scrapped that yesterday as well. So you can now get prior approval up to any size. So this is really good news that wasn't talked about on the budget. So overall, the last 24 hours, I think has been a pretty big win for property investors and developers. Let me know what you think in the comments below. There are further information going to be announced. This literally is brand new, hot off the press, just an hour and a half ago. So there's going to be more information revealed over the coming weeks and months. So let me know which one you're most interested in. Maybe I'll do some more detailed videos. Is this good? Is this bad? Let me know in the comments. And I hope that has been helpful.